Let's now take a look at a strategy that we can use to calculate the surface area of some basic solids. Keeping in mind that you can actually use this strategy with, well, pretty much any sort of solid three-dimensional shape that you have, whether that be a prism such as the one we've got here, or a tapered solid, or a more complex shape than that. One strategy that we can use is to create a net diagram of the shape that we're trying to calculate the surface area of. Now, a net diagram essentially is where we take the shape that we've got, unfold it all to create a two-dimensional sort of diagram that represents the three-dimensional shape if we were to fold it back together. For example, if I was to unravel this shape here, it would look something like this. So here, I've created this two-dimensional diagram now, known as a net. Now, if I were to fold these back up, it would create this rectangular prism that I've got here. Now, the main advantage of doing this is we've now got a 2D flat representation of all the surfaces that make up our three-dimensional shape. And if we were to calculate the area of each individual shape that we've got here, and then add them all together, we would find the total area of all the surfaces of our three-dimensional shape, or the surface area as it's known. But before we can do that, we actually need to put our side lengths onto our diagram. So if we were to assume that this shape just in here was that part of my diagram, it would mean that this length here is 10 centimetres. And the height would be that length just in here, which is five centimetres. Now, I'm gonna pretend that I've opened this box out this way, so these are my little flaps. And my flaps, if I flattened it back out, would be six centimetres in that direction. But with all net diagrams, we've gotta remember that when we fold it back together, there are certain edges that must align with each other, so they must be the same length. For example, this edge here, when you fold it back together, will join with this edge in here. So they both must be the same length, or six centimetres. That also means, because this is a rectangle, that this edge must be the same, but when it gets folded together, it'll line up with this edge. So they're both six centimetres. But you've got to remember, we've got a three-dimensional shape, this rectangle in here is the same as that rectangle on that side. So both of these must also be six centimeters, which means that the joining edge of those must also be six centimeters. The next thing that we can deduce out of this is all four of these edges around our box must be the same as each other. So this 10 centimeters all must be these side lengths just in here. Finally, the five centimetres in here, this is a rectangle, which means that that five centimetres must be the same as that five centimetres in here. And because they're extending out to the same rectangle, that also must be five centimetres. But you've got to remember that this part here represents the face that's closest to me just in here you've got to remember that there's another face that's the same on the other side of our object. So that means that this shape is repeated just down in here, meaning that this is five centimeters and this is also five centimeters. So now we've got our net diagram with all the dimensions on there. The next thing I like to do is to start looking at the actual faces themselves and go, are there any repeating faces? In this case, I can see that this face here has the same dimension as this face here. So what I do is I call this shape one, and we've got two of them. I then have a look at some of the others. For example, I know this face here is repeated down in here. So I can call this one face two, and the same as this face and this face here. So I'm gonna call this one face three. And what I can now say is to calculate the total surface area of this shape, what we would need to do is to calculate the area of each individual shape here. So the area of shape one, the area of shape two, and the area of shape three, 
but we have two of each one of these, so it'll be two lots of each one of these, and add them together. From here, we now record what formula we would use for each face. Now, all these are rectangles, and the formula to calculate the area of a rectangle is length times width. So, we can say that we would need two lots of the length times width of shape one, plus two lots of the length times the width of shape two, plus another two lots of the length times the width of shape three. And now we just use substitution to replace the values of each shape. So in shape one, the length was six centimeters by five centimeters. Of shape two, the length was 10 centimeters by five centimeters. Of shape three, the length was 10 centimeters by six centimeters. And from here, we could either put it into a calculator and get the answer straight away, or just start simplifying this equation out. So six times five is 30. 10 times five is uh, 50. And 10 times six is 60. Two times 30 is 60. Two times 50 is 100 and two times 60 is 120. Therefore, our surface area is 220 plus 60 is 280, and then finally our units, all these were in centimeters, so it's 280 squared centimeters. So in summary, one strategy that we can use to calculate the surface area of basic solids is to take the solid that we've got and create a net diagram that displays all the faces that we're trying to calculate the area of. And it essentially sort of becomes a composite area problem where we start by going, are there any faces that are the same? Because if they're repeated faces, there's no point doing the same calculation twice. So in this case, each face had a repeated face somewhere else in the shape. So what we did is we said we've got two lots of each face and we added them together. After that, you've got to work out what formula you would need to calculate the area of each individual face. And it's not always length times width. It does depend on what shapes you've got on your net diagram. Once we've done that, you substitute the information for each face and then you solve the equation to find the surface area of the solid that you have.